You have arrived at your destination. This is Jason Alon from the Fever 333, and you're listening to the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Boy. That's right, Wildlings. You have arrived at your destination. It is the Sean vs. Wild podcast. And you know what time it is. It's time to rock and roll all night and podcast every Tuesday. Listeners, the internet says that Halloween season is upon us, okay? Even though it didn't get any colder yet, uh, the leaves have not changed any colors, and they haven't fallen from the trees, apparently once October 1st rolls around, it is officially Halloween season. And you know what? Your boy's going to kick it off big time. This week on the show, I'm talking to Prayer Line, a brand new horror-themed punk rock band from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, that's right. I've got Jake 1, Jake 2, Austin, and Phil the Thrill right here in the Smithsonian this week. And we're going to be talking about uh, songs about serial killers and songs about horror movies. We're going to be talking about uh, that weird scene in Ghostbusters. You know, you know which scene I'm talking about. And if not, you'll find out soon enough. We're going to be talking about their upcoming shows at the Odeon. Uh, That's going to be this Friday and their upcoming show, uh, October 27th at Kaiju. That's with Girlwood and Blind Scryer. Uh, Mostly, though, I want to point out it is not with Vader Bomb, okay? And they have some choice words for Vader Bomb on this podcast this week, guys. Uh, The drama is real. Some very choice words that they have to say about Vader Bomb, and uh, they're not pulling any punches. And, you know, oddly enough, this thing just keeps on escalating over and over. Uh, Yesterday, I just saw a video where Vader Bomb says that they're too good, essentially, to play uh, with Prayer Line. And they said that, you know, Prayer Line couldn't afford them anyway, and that they're going to be playing a show uh, at Spinelli's instead, uh, and it's going to be a big money matinee. Uh, very insulting, guys. And they're, the insults are going to be flying right here on the podcast this week. So definitely tune in. Tune in for the beef, dude. Where's the beef right here on the podcast this week? Tune in for the drama. And speaking of drama, I've got a little drama myself. And uh, I think you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Leo Weekly. Yeah, that's right. I'm calling you guys out. Or maybe I'm calling out the readers of Leo Weekly. Um, you know, if anybody actually reads it. Uh, but yeah, some a lot of people have been coming up to me. They're like, hey, uh, did you read the Leo? Did you see the top three Louisville podcasts? And what do you think about the fact that you are not one, two, or three? And to that, guys, uh, if you didn't read my post on Facebook, I will just say to that, I don't need Leo Weekly to tell me uh, if this podcast is good or not. I know I have the best podcast in Louisville. I know I have the best fans in Louisville, the best listening audience, the best friends, the best family. And uh, it's we're a tight-knit community here at Sean vs. Wild. I know we're the best. And uh, you know, I challenge anybody, hey, if you think you're in Louisville and you got a better podcast than this guy... Hit me up, dude. Maybe we can collaborate. Who knows? We don't have to. We don't have to make this turn ugly. Who knows? But yeah, um, my alter ego posted that the other day. Old Sean V S Wild. Forget Sean Thriller Smith. Sean V S Wild is uh, just cutting promos on everybody. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Sean V S Wild is going to be telling you all about my recommendations for this week. Joe, cue the music. Recommendations. Yeah, that's right. Recommendations number one. Visit NeverNervous.com. That's Never-Nervous.com. Jake and Phil from Never Nervous are also part of Prayer Line. And if you ask me, if you ask Sean V.S. Wild, that is the premier Louisville publication. Forget Leo Weekly, all right? NeverNervous.com has got all the deets when it comes to local haps. So definitely check it out. Recommendation number one. Recommendation number two, Drink Tecate. All right. Tecate is going to be high on my recommendations. I had a great conversation fueled on Tecate, had a great weekend fueled on Tecate. And uh, Jake is going to give you a great recipe for the Tecate sunrise. So recommendation number two, have some Tecate. Best part, no hangover. You know what's up? No hangover. I feel like a million dollars the next day. Recommendation number three, uh, get that new issue of the Leo Weekly and throw it in the trash. 
All right, guys, that's it for recommendations. Let me tell you about my sponsors. Of course, I'm going to tell you about Audiophile Inc., audiophileinc.com. Um, Shane from Audiophile Inc. has been printing my stuff for over a decade. He can do the same for you, giving you the best deal in town on your screen printing needs, no matter what town you live in. All you have to do is go to audiophileinc.com and tell Shane that the wild man sent you. It's as simple as that, guys. Also, want to give a big shout out to Audible. Uh, that's right, Audible. It's an Amazon company. They're going to take care of you, man, if you've got an audiobook fix. And I know that I have really had uh, a jonesing for some audiobooks lately. I have been tearing it up. Maybe it is the Halloween season. You know, the internet says it's Halloween season. Maybe it is. Uh, I've been really uh, checking out some Stephen King. I downloaded The Stand. It's like a 50 hour audiobook, and I have been enjoying it. I also got Pet Cemetery, which is uh, narrated by Michael C. Hall. You guys know him as David Fisher from Six Feet Under, or probably know him best as Dexter from the show. Dexter. Yes. Uh, so I got a couple Stephen King audiobooks, and I've been burning through them. Perfect. Uh, for October. And uh, yeah, so go to audibletrial.com slash Sean versus wild and you check out what the hype is all about. They're going to give you a free 30 days just for listening to the podcast. That's audibletrial.com slash Sean versus wild. Um, also want to give a big shout out to Joe Brock, that dirty dial booper that's making me sound like a hundred bucks each and every week, week in and week out. Because of Joe's production, I am number two in the United States when it comes to music podcast, number two in the world because the United States rocks so hard, and um, number four in Louisville, apparently. I don't know. I didn't make the top three in Louisville, but Joe, that's going to be our next goal. Listeners out there, uh, if you want to see Sean versus Wild at the top of uh, any list, you got to get out there and make sure you put the name in uh, and tell everybody who the greatest podcast is or what podcast you like. Um, tell them about Sean versus Wild is all I'm saying, and uh, yeah. We'll make it happen. This week, I'm talking to Prayer Line, and uh, I've, I've just rambled on and on and on, and uh, that's going to be it for me. My conversation with Prayer Line starts right now. Let's get wild. Guys, I want you to know I'm debuting a new character, okay? That Sean Thriller Smith guy that I kept talking about. Who's that dude? Yeah, exactly. That's old news. That's old hat. Uh, so you guys are going to be the first one to, to check out Sean V.S. Wild. I'm super excited about yeah, this. Yeah, you're a big wrestling fan. <laughs> yeah. And all Sean V.S. Wild does, he doesn't take any shit. He just <laughs> drinks cold Tecate. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to cut a scathing promo on anybody. I like beer. I'm not going to lie to you. I uh, tried it out. little social experiment on Facebook. Uh, the Leo Weekly uh, stuff came out. And uh, some people were coming up to me at this bar that I was in. And they're like, man, uh, you know what do you think about uh, who they picked? And I was like, oh, who they pick? And they're like, well, not you. <laughs> We're like, best podcast? And I was like, oh, shit. Well, I guess I better check it out. And then the more I was like having some uh, Tecates and the more uh, I was looking at this list, I was like, ew, dude, that gum looks disgusting, bro. No. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Shoving gum into a monster can, guys. That reminds me of the movie Phil watched last night, The Blob. The Blob. <laughs> Blob 88. Dude, my man came home after a hard day, cooked dinner. He can't be expected to watch a good movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, it's great. But anyway, so the more I was looking at this list, and it was like the podcast that won was like some yoga podcast mm -hmm. from like it had one review. How, well, I am really curious. I'm going to have to listen to it because how the fuck can you have a yoga podcast? That's what I'm saying, dude. Maybe Isn't that something yoga. you have to see? I don't know, man. Maybe they're just calling out instructions. I would listen to a DD. <laughs> I would listen to a DDP yoga podcast because they'd be like, "All right, now broken table. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take it all the way into down dog." <laughs> but he has different names for it. It's all like dead man and yeah. broken table and all that stuff. Kick out diamond cutter. Yeah, diamond cutter. <laughs> it's gonna realign the spine, dude. Gonna... <laughs> anyway, but yeah. So key thing is, is I just uh, posted this this thing on Facebook after like. I don't know, five years of only posting positive stuff. I was just like, I don't care who the readers of Leo Weekly picked. I'm the best podcast. Mm -hmm. And if you come at me, uh, you know, and if you disagree, come at me, dude. And you, you know, whatever. Blah, Did blah, anybody, blah. Has anybody come at you? Dude, not a single person came at me. <laughs> They're scared. Not a single person came at me and tried to take my throne of greatest podcast in Louisville. But people are agreeing with me, which is nice. And yeah. then other people are subscribing and listening to the podcast. <laughs> That's and I'm awesome. Like, I should have been controversial years ago. You're, you're taking the Kanye path. <laughs> dude, I'm taking the Kanye path all the way to the White House. <laughs> dude. 
I'm going to have the greatest podcast, and Uncle Donnie's going to have the greatest country on earth. And that's just how it's going to be, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, this isn't just the Sean vs. Wild podcast. Uh, this is actually the Sean vs. Wild podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm here with Prayer Line, the hottest new horror theme spooky band uh, in the Louisville scene. And I'm here with Austin and Jake and Jake and of course Phil the Gill. <laughs> I don't know. I'm giving you a cool nickname. No, that that works. <laughs> what are some nicknames you've had in your life? Uh, well, I, I have oversized ears. Uh huh. So uh, yeah, I was wondering how those headphones are going <laughs> to work out. For you. Uh, ra- radar was my personal favorite. Uh, radar, s- you know, like like you can't see this, but yeah. like like you know, like satellite or yeah. um, much like actual radar, uh, you can't really see it. We lovingly refer to him as Baby Dick. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Now, yes. why is that? Is that because it looks small compared to your ears? No, or? that's just how he acts. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, it's true, dude. Like you know how you told him to watch Frelty and he hasn't done it for oh five my, years. Yeah, that's true. I even wrote an article for Never Nervous about how great Frailty was, and you didn't take my advice, dude. I'm sorry, man. I've seen it's true. I've you must seen be cooking a lot of dinners, man. No. <laughs> Because you're really not watching Frailty. I've seen I've seen Twister, man. It ruined. I can't take him seriously unless he's like in weird science, and because he's great. Yeah, that's the movie you take seriously. Yeah, dude. Yes. Well, it's got science in the title. <laughs> yes, and a great Oingo Boingo track. And I'm a man of science, not a man of that faith. That's for sure. <laughs> right. There it's you go. 2018, dude. You can't believe in God anymore. You can only believe in science. <laughs> weird yeah, science. I remember <laughs> weird science. When, when Bill Paxton passed away, I thought to myself, I was like, okay, I'm definitely watching Frailty now. And how many years ago was that? Um, two. Yeah, he died two, two years ago. Two years ago. Sorry, Mr. Paxton. I'm <laughs> a little behind. But I saw Titanic he's too. Dead. He hasn't heard, he's not going to hear your apology, bro. Oh, uh, well. We saw Titanic too. How Titan- was that? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they thawed him out. <laughs> Dude, that scene in Ghostbusters 2 when the Titanic pulls up, fucking rules, man. Yeah. And, and, then you, and, and then, like, fucking. And that's the end of that story. And then, fucking Cheech is like, well, better late than never. Uh, does he sound like that? It's, I guess. You know, I don't he's know. Like, uh, no, I don't, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know how to do a Cheech, okay? <laughs> you just said it <laughs> so politically correct. He was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You know Cheech. Cheech was in full character. Yes. I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. Maybe I'm just literally confusing him with his character. Ghostbusters 2 is, the, smoke. is always on TV. Like, they never show the first one ever. Well, I've seen Ghostbusters 2, I feel like, I don't know, a hundred times more yeah. than I've yeah, seen me well, too. Yeah. It's not a good movie, but I do love it, though. It's a bad movie. You know, I kind of am not, like, super... I'm, I'm maybe the only person on Earth that's, like, not super into Ghostbusters. Like, I, th- I think the second one's good because I've seen it so many times. Yeah. I well, enjoy and, it. And Star Wars. Uh, you don't like Star Wars or Ghostbusters. Man, why does Star Wars always got to keep coming on, on this it's podcast? This guy. Over, over it's and over again. You got a real You're fucking like problem, Tim man. You're like right now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think Ghostbusters is uh, like fine, but people like act like it was like the shit, and I'm like, ah, it's okay. No, it's pretty great. I like we, the second one. We haven't <laughs> written a song about Ghostbusters yet because that <clears throat> so- that theme song is already on every fucking Halloween playlist yeah. there is. So. Dun, 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 bam, bam. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like when you go through like the uh, Kentucky Kingdom haunted house, it's going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> Could I pose a, a question yes. to the, the crowd? Um, how does everybody feel about the ghost blowjob scene from the original Ghost? Oh, I love it. That's my favorite. That's a part. great question. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. So the, I just I thought, actually didn't even know right now that that happened. So I gotta oh, go back. Man. And, <laughs> dude, <laughs> okay. Dan Aykroyd's in bed and his pants unbuckle. The belt gets uh, untaken out and then like the z- the zipper comes down and this ghost is hovering over him and he makes his eyes go crossed. They, they cross and bug out of his head. And it's he like go- Ace Ventura and. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but uh, but Dan a- or Dan Aykroyd goes, oh, yeah. and, and then that's it. Which, I just watched this a which year song ago. Song is playing in the background. When it's, that happens. it's it's the Ghostbusters theme oh, song. Wow, it's the montage yeah. scene yeah. when they're when they become famous. Well, I, I will I will say that while I love the movie, it made watching it with the children a little uncomfortable. <laughs> it's weird because I used to watch it with my parents like every week. I watched and it the, a year ago. <laughs> that was the eighties. <laughs> it was yeah. the eighties, dude. <laughs> I watched but it a I year ago know. and didn't even know that happened. I, I didn't it totally know. went over my well, head. Maybe you still have a kid's brain because when I was a kid, I was just like, man, that ghost is really being scary right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he scared him to death, dude. He scared him cross-eyed. He scared him cross-eyed. <laughs> it's like half the blowjobs I've had in my life, Is actually. that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know what? I think that's what happened to Shawn Michaels. He got a ghost blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the heartbreak kid, dude. Did you see the Heartbreak Kid's bald now? Oh, yeah. Dude, and he just got like a... Looks like he was wearing some sort of uh, shirt sleeve bandana. Yeah, it's really weird, but man. It was t- it was, it's kind of depressing. Yeah. But I did enjoy that match, honestly. So. Isn't it, there's nothing more depressing than when uh, wrestlers that you grew up with start looking like, you know, a truck driving papa. Yeah. You know, it's weird you say that because <laughs> the there, worst. there's this band in Louisville right now. Oh, that yeah. They, they write songs about wrestlers like yeah. classic wrestling they've been around they've been, for a they've while been in the ring. yeah they've been in the ring they've been in the ring but yeah. i mean they're, they they they're something but basically it sounds awesome they've been around well, was this awesome it was awesome no oh, okay but they've been around for a while and i'm gonna say one thing there's nothing worse than a washed up band that doesn't know that they're washed up yeah. oh yeah their band i'm talking about is vader bomb they need to give it up oh yeah. vader bomb's still around yeah exactly well, oh, yeah boy. Exactly. exactly i haven't yeah. thought about them in like 10 years yeah they're i mean they haven't done anything in quite a while uh actually the last time we saw them was two years ago halloween night or maybe it was mm-hmm. three years ago who knows and but they were jerks then they were jerks uh jake actually got a concussion at that yeah. show i threw up and cried yeah, I, I actually I was I dressed up as Owen Hart that night and um, I had my wife's Canadian flag. She's from Montreal, uh-huh. and uh, I w- she made me promise her not to get it dirty, and I did. I yeah. swore to her I was not going to get the Canadian well, I mean, flag dirty. That maple leaf is sacred. Well, that, is. their singer El Chubbs uh, mid set tackled me and I dropped the flag, and it, the show was packed, uh, and like half the people there stepped on it. Yeah. Oh, got dude. their got their yeah. footprints all over the Canadian the flag. sacred leaf. So yeah. basically, my wife, you know, she hates them. I hate them. Jake, and, and I, Canada I mean, hates them probably. Yeah, Canada, well, I, I mean, and I can't say that I blame them. Yeah, I mean, well, we also have a beef with them currently. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's what. That's why it's on my fucking mind. I know. That's why they've been on your shit list. They're this on whole our time. shit list, one hundred percent. They were supposed to play. We have a show coming up at uh, Kaiju on October twenty seventh. Big Halloween bash yes. yes with blind scryer and girlwood and originally if you see the flyers around town you will see vader bomb on the flyer because they committed to the show and then after we paid big money for these yeah, flyers, it's a pristine yeah. expensive yeah, tell me glossy more about flyer because i know you spent uh i i mean i'm not going to say it on the podcast it was but a couple spent, grand I, I know you spent <laughs> some uh a considerable you made a considerable investment yeah we made yeah. an investment in the show and they backed out after we already paid for these glossy high quality flyers yes and um, man, that's not a gr- that's not a good look. They're, then, not, they're not flyers; they're fucking posters, man. They're really nice posters. Yeah, and, and this, guess what? And, and Jake Miller, our you know guitarist, other Jake, who's in he, the room right now, who's in the room right? He's <laughs> he spent who posed the blowjob Ghostbusters scenario. <laughs> yeah. He spent who knows how many hours on on creating the poster. Yeah. I mean, that was his time. Yeah, he could have been spending do- time doing anything else. They they took time that I could have spent with my children. Exactly. Exactly. That's my fucking point. The real the real shit heels. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And so, but here's the thing: is then a week? What was it? Two weeks later, we see they're playing a matinee show the same day at Spinelli's. Yeah. 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 Now I didn't want to bring it up, but I have an insider on the inside. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I've been reading the dirt. Is sheets. it Meltzer? And. <laughs> That's I don't think you know. I don't want to say his name in fear okay. of incriminating him, right. but I will say this: I have an insider, and uh, he told me that Vader Bomb is going to be playing uh, something called a a big money matinee. Oh, is that how they're referring to it? Yeah, a big money matinee. What do you guys have hmm. to? What do you guys think about that? I, well, I think I to mean, just get the you know talk to the hand from Vader. Obviously, Bomb. they're greedy because they haven't done anything in years now or like a year and a half at actually least. you know what i don't even remember the last time i've heard new music i think their yeah. last album came out in like 2000 who knows when so it's i'm sure they long. need the money because they've been sitting on their ass for two years yeah at least yeah. much like the real vader yeah <laughs> <laughs> too soon too soon, too soon. Uh, you know so uh what i mean i don't know it's not like we weren't gonna pay anybody for the show but it's not we're not also not trying to get rid you know, of the you know show this crazy? is about having a good time you know how you know that vader bomb is totally washed up and nobody cares anymore i actually ran into jim Cornette at a gas station last week and i this is when we still thought that vader bomb was playing the show and i said hey mr Cornette, i'm a big fan of yours but if you didn't know jim Cornette lives in louisville mm-hmm. in a middle town and i was like hey mr Cornette, we're i'm a huge huge fan of yours and um Considering he used to manage Vader, I was like, "Hey, man, the 
Vader, a band called Vader Bomb was playing. You know, it's fucking Vader Bomb. And he was like, who? He had no idea who the fuck yeah. I was talking about. Yeah. God damn. God damn, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. No, and seriously, he was just looked at me like a fucking dog that's been shown a card trick and like pump, <laughs> just, kept pump, <laughs> just kept pumping his gas. So one time Jim Cornette talked about going to Clarksville Seafood to eat, which is like right over here, not yeah. too far, one town over. And it's like a little hole in the wall secret. And he tweeted about, or and maybe he didn't tweet about Clarksville Seafood. Maybe he said it on like Austin's podcast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, Jim Cornette just mentioned Clarksville Seafood. <laughs> and I tweeted him and then he fucking liked it and retweeted it. <laughs> 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 so big shout out to Clarksville Seafood. Yeah, Jim Cornette retweeted us too. Uh, I think to summarize what we're trying to get across here, Jim Cornette rules. Yes, Vader bomb drools. There you go. You yeah, know? it is what we it don't. Is, we guys. don't like them. Yeah. Well, and you know, I can't say that I blame you after some of the stuff that I've seen over the past uh, day and mm-hmm. some of the stuff I've been reading in the dirt sheets. Yeah, you guys seem to have a real, uh, real beef. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know what? I don't like their stupid masks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I think their masks are stupid. I'm just going to say, guys, I have no dog in this fight. But if you're going to name yourself after a wrestler, don't don't let it be Van Vader. (laughs) Because (laughs) Big Van Vader, the shittiest wrestler ever. And that's all that I have to say about it. Guys, would, Invader Bomb, feel free to counterpoint right here on the Sean vs. Wild podcast. No, I will say, if, you, if you're if you like, the highlight of your career is, a, is appearing on Boy Meets World, then you've got a problem. <laughs> oh, another thing, you don't want you don't want them to respond on your podcast, because we I think they were our first guests on our podcast, Yeah, and they fucking just walked off. They got mad and just left. Yeah, when you say our podcast, he's referring to oh, ne- Never, Nervous, Never Nervous, the Never yeah. Nervous podcast. And yeah. What's uh, his name? Bunkhouse Buck or no, something? No. <laughs> So anyway, like in the middle of when we were podcasting with Vader Bomb, they we were interviewing two of them, El Chubbs and the guitar player. The guitar player just gets up in the middle of the show and just fucking walks out. Yeah. Remember, he gave us three warnings. That's how fucking like they're whack. They're dude. they're bitches. And man. then they did that on the written interview too. They were like, "This interview's over, Jack." Yeah, yeah. They're it's like they're fucking calling the shots. It's like, dude, you, you, nobody cares about you. Yeah, they, they think fuck. they're big shots. Yeah, dude. Much like the Leo Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a podcast filled to the brim with beef. <laughs> We're just talking shit. <laughs> I'm just saying here, Louisville, you deserve a better class of publication. And the Leo Weekly is not going to be that. Sean V.S. Wild. The Sean V.S. Wild podcast. I'm going to give it to you guys. Uh, that's what's up. You, you, know gotta, who, you know who would have voted for you, number one? A lot of people voted for me, number one. But instead, but I guess not enough people because of a, a yoga podcast with 200 followers and one review. <laughs> Totally beat me. Wait, so wait, let me ask you this. One review. How so many you're beefing with a yoga podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, I am. No, how many reviews I'm only gonna is good? I'm going to do DDP yoga, okay? <laughs> how many reviews is good? As many as you can get. It, like, give me, I would give say, me a number. I would say zero would be the worst. That's where Never Nervous is at right now. <laughs> zero would be the worst, and then one would be second to worst. <laughs> <laughs> so... How many reviews is good? I don't know. Some. <laughs> I mean, would you say like 11? Would you be like, oh, 11 reviews. That's pretty That's good. That's pretty good. You know what? Never, the know. Never Nervous podcast, I don't think we've ever had a review. But one time in the Leo, they did write about us as the best <laughs> podcast in Louisville. That's true. Now I've got a beef with Never Nervous. It's Sean versus the world, okay? Starting right now. I'm beefing with everybody. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, Never Nervous. Did, did you guys get best podcast or best publication um, blog or best, blog oh blog. blog we got second best blog this year last year we got first right yeah last year we got first it's always a battle with us in card chronicle it's not a battle fucking yeah. card chronicle is the baddest fucking site in i'm louisville. coming after i don't know if you're a louisville fan at all it's not it's not fashionable to be a louisville fan right now because of all like the hooker uh bullshit and and fucking bobby petrino just being a total also, washed up piece of shit whatever's going on in court right now where we paid our players and all that well that's here's what i want to say well, guys if you think that the University of Louisville is the only fucking team that's ever paid players yeah, to do silly. anything Duh. or offered them anything. You are absolutely wrong. Every one well, of those schools is dropping bags of money. Every yes. single one. And the thing is, I don't care. It's not. I, I don't even want to talk about that because it just fucking bums Let's me out. Let's talk about it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk no. about a real life horror movie? No, what I do want to talk about is how fucking. I'm now, just did you saying say horror or horror. If, <laughs> if if you're a fan of Louisville sports, Card Chronicle is by far the baddest site. 
ever. Yeah. It is it is so fucking good. Is, you that, know, a, is that a Magic the Gathering uh, yes. website? Is yes, that it is. Card Chronicle? Yes. Come to think of it, I'm pissed that I didn't get Best Writer, so let's talk about that for a little while. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about that, because I <laughs> yeah. thought you were a shoe in Best Writer. <laughs> yeah. Like that one time that you and Sid wrote about uh, where to fart in Louisville yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fucking a plus. What are some of the best places? <laughs> yeah, to fart uh, in Louisville. I don't know. I think it was like ice cream spots and stuff. I like know that. where the best place to fart in Louisville is. I found this out last Saturday Dude, morning. There is not a spot in Louisville you haven't farted. <laughs> I know, but I, that's why I'm uh, an expert. So the best place to fart in Louisville is my cubicle at my job, because I just found out that I'm lactose intolerant recently, <laughs> and I like on Friday night last week I ate. An, uh, a courageous amount of <laughs> ice cream, and uh, the next morning uh, I was farting so much that the lady that no, my manager in the office across the way came to me and just looked at me over my cubicle and said, "What is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> Did you even? I, I haven't even got to ask you this because you were so busy last week. When I wrote that Kentucky Vampires review, did you even actually read it? Absolutely, I did. And thank you for letting <laughs> whoever likes the Kentucky Vampires know that I've got a farting problem. <laughs> Just when it comes to lactose, dude, you ain't, you're not going to tolerate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? I feel that, dude. So anyway, yeah. Dude, this podcast is sponsored by Tecate. Everybody. <laughs> Cracking open their ice cold cates. Can, yeah, I, can so, I tell you about my Takati drink? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that would be fantastic. <laughs> Takati. Spl- this would really probably make Phil's life a lot easier because you know when it. he comes home and he cooks, he probably wants a good <laughs> recipe that is just a real reliable go to. Yes. Takati, splash of tequila, salt and lime. It's a Takati sunrise. You guys will like it. It's cheap. Salt and Use Costco lime. tequila. What if you just like drink your use kosher beer, salt? Though? Well, I mean, you can. I guess. <laughs> Are you upset right now? <laughs> no. I do wish I had limes, but this is a podcast. Yeah. Our hands would get sticky, and then the microphones would get sticky. And <laughs> nobody wants a good sticky microphone. Right. <laughs> not on this. <laughs> I'm not going to tolerate that shit. All right. Yes. I'm sticky intolerant. <laughs> uh, so you guys. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, so you guys uh, mentioned it, but uh, let's make it official. You're also Jake number one mm-hmm. and austin 316 correct <laughs> <laughs> brothers and phil yeah. and uh but you guys are all uh and jake number two everybody's <laughs> affiliated uh with the uh never nervous brand as well yeah well well yeah. no it, well kind of like jake miller's uh jake number two whatever jake miller <laughs> uh, yeah but i don't want to jake wanna, the snake i don't want to give miller. everybody numbers because <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, uh, he's definitely done a bunch of cool shit for yeah. Never Nervous. Austin, you said at the podcast for us. Yes, Austin's done some cool shit. Uh, but like, it's primarily uh, as of right now. In uh, what is today's date? October, whatever. Yeah, October, whatever. Okay, yeah. uh, it's exactly. as in 2018. Right now, it's it's literally uh, Jake Hellman and myself, Philip Olympia. We run it, and um, we have a really great time. We still love it. Um, we've been doing it since 2011. Um, and there, we don't plan to stop anytime soon. Yeah. We're making some major changes. We don't really know what they are yet because we, we are not organized and we don't plan for anything. We sure. made some changes today, actually. We put some bats in the logo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you <laughs> yeah. go. You know how like October has this holiday called whatever about movies and scary yeah, I've stuff. heard about that. Yeah, it's about movies. Yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> but we made a... We, I updated the logo and now it's got like four bats on it. Oh, cool. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sounds rad, dude. Yeah. I can't wait to check it out. Wait till you hear about our further plans. Just a, <laughs> just a few dude, clicks away. Come December, there'll be uh, some mistletoe. Dude. <laughs> That's the name of my next porno. It's called Come December. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I've got a really funny story, and I don't know if I should use this guy's name, but I kind of have to. But this guy, there's a driver that works for my company. I work for a produce delivery company. His name is Robert Easter, okay? Dude, and you just like put his full Christian yeah, name out there too. Yeah, you his could name have is said Robert. His name is okay. It's his name is uh, John Easter. Gotcha. Now you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so he, I, we got a call the other day, and we get complaints every once in a while about a driver that fucking hit their awning or you know said some you know hey get the fuck out of my way kind of stuff. Yeah. But this person, one of our customers, called, and they just wanted to congratulate our driver for being the best driver, or whatever. So he's, he's uh, this lady's going on and on and on, and at the end of the conversation, we're like, "Okay, so who? What's the name of the driver?" And the lady says, "Oh, 
it's Robert Christmas, and he is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Christmas. <laughs> Lloyd Christmas. <laughs> That's amazing. Did anybody ever put two and two together that if Mary Swanson and Lloyd Christmas got married, that her name would be Mary Christmas? Oh my mm, God! Man, Did anybody man. ever put that together? Man, you are so living in the present. Dude, I swear to That's God, it's me, dude. Twenty eighteen. <laughs> speaking of twenty eighteen, this is a question for Austin. What do you think about? Uh, when uh, Phil over there was all like, well, uh, well, I guess Austin has like a little part to do with like what, <laughs> what we did never know this, but it's like pretty much 100% me and like a little bit of Jake Holman. <laughs> uh, yeah. I edited like six podcasts, so yeah, it's a little part. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> Look at this guy taking all the glory for himself. Yeah. Basking in his riches. Right. I think we're That's done. Cool. We're probably done with the podcast now because we can't keep up with all these yoga motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah You might as well just quit, man. Because if you had, if you had, actually, all you need to do is get one review, <laughs> and once you get one review, you're going to be in the running. <laughs> it's weird because I was thinking about starting my own show called Phil versus Wild, uh-huh. and like you could be called Phil the Thrill. That's Phil the Thrill. God, you are. Man. You're good. By the it. way, thanks for letting That's us. Way better than Phil the Gill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Why did you think yeah. of that earlier? I don't know, man. I didn't want him to step on my fucking Did gimmick. you understand how crazy Brother. it is to be in the Smithsonian right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's everything that you wanted it to be. Like As soon as you came in, you're like, dude, I can't wait to see the studio. And I'm like, it's going to be anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> you well, right. well, no, I mean, I, it's like we I said. We got Kiss and Michael Jackson watching over us. That's yeah, dude, and Ric Flair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ric Flair. Yeah. Never heard of him. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so... Uh, but yeah, well, I don't know. Never what nervous, dude. Two, guys, there's uh, like four bats on the logo, guys. Go yeah, ahead and check it out. Never hyphen nervous.com. Yes. We write up those bats. We write about things. Is that a hyphen or a dash? It's a fucking dash. It's man. definitely a what's called a hyphen because some people might think a dash would be a slash or an underscore. That's and I their like own to just problem. say nobody hyphen. says that. Nobody says that. Hyphen sounds way cooler than dash, too. Maybe that's just with this guy's opinion. I don't know. I mean, I'm just... I don't know. All right, guys. I went uh, to Northern <laughs> Kentucky University. <laughs> Did you hear that? He went to Norbert. <laughs> Norbert Kentucky <laughs> University. I went to Norbert <laughs> University. Eddie Murphy were, was every professor. <laughs> <laughs> and, dude, it was, it was nutty. <laughs> I had the nuttiest professor. <laughs> dude, you'll never believe it. One day he was fat. One day he was thin. <laughs> One day he was in a suit. The next day, all spandex. <laughs> so, Woo. Norbit, right. Kentucky University. <laughs> but guys, uh, so not only uh, are you a part of, uh, you know, Never Nervous, you've started this awesome band, and it's probably about time we talk about it, Prayer Line. Yes. And, uh, of course, you're not taking any shit from Vader Bomb, and I don't, I'm don't. i not going to blame you. I, yeah. I don't want to take sides here, but I think I got your back on this one. Yeah, it's funny because Pr- Vader Bomb actually insulted Prayer Line and Never Nervous at the same time. Oh, man. That's a double whammy. Yeah. First mm. they hit you with the left and then the right. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, they're real shit heaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First they get you with a short arm clothesline, then they're hitting you with the DDT, and the next thing you know, you got a concussion and you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go, dude. <laughs> That's, that is what it is. But let's yeah. talk about let's talk about prayer line here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, what made you guys decide to uh, get this thing going, dude? And then, uh, what made you decide on the theme of the band? I think uh, I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. Jake, do you remember posting on Facebook like maybe four years ago about doing like a like doing some kind of band like we're doing now? And I responded to it, and we were like, we should do that, and then we never did. <laughs> I, it, it seems vaguely familiar. I. Said a lot of things on Facebook. Yeah, well, I've, I think, <laughs> I've said a lot of things over the years. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the point, though, that I'm trying to make is like it's something we've always talked about. Yeah. Like probably yes. all of us. Well, I mean, it should be said that uh, number one, Jake Hellman and I. God, this is confusing. Hell, man, yeah. Jake Hellman. Uh, Just call me Manaconda. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so we've been. We first of all, we've all known each other for a very long time. <laughs> okay, so Jake Hellman and I have been in bands in the past. We uh, and we've we've been friends. And we've known each other since you know forever ago. Jake Miller, same way I've known Jake Miller, actually longer than I've known Jake Hellman. And we actually did a band too. We were in like a quote unquote band that never did anything. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the point is, 
Jake, imagine that a band that doesn't do anything. Yeah, in Louisville. what else? Really. Do? Here's the st- we never even got out of a living room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but here, we never thing- even plugged our instruments in, dude. We just started watching the Blob '88. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. No, but basically, because I don't, I know how boring band stories are. But uh, basically, uh, Jake was like out of a, a band, and I wasn't in a band. So uh, I was like, me and Jake were going to plan on writing some punk songs. And I was like, oh, yeah, me and Jake, we, the three, me, me, Jake, and other Jake we used to be, used to write music together. And it was really, really fun. So fuck it. Why don't I just ask yeah. him? And then, of course, Jake's younger brother, Austin, is a, a good drummer. And Austin and I have always wanted to do an actual band together, too. I bought him his first drum set when he was in sixth grade. Yeah. So and he still hasn't learned to play it. <laughs> <laughs> Zing, coming in red hot. <laughs> well, bas- basically, I uh, we had some ideas. Um, the whole horror uh, idea didn't happen. Like the first song I wrote, I was like trying to. We had uh, music written, and I was like trying to write lyrics for it. And it's like, I'm so fucking over like writing about like my feelings or uh, yeah, who cares? Or it, it, thank you because I don't care about yours at all. Exactly. Uh, but or like or the like, tell poly- me about your dream. Who no, wants to hear? Please. Who wants to hear a song about Donald Trump? I don't. Yeah. Um, so basically. I thought it. I'm just saying. I'm Although t- that's I'm, the biggest horror story in the world right now. It is. Oh, it, it, it's it's fu- it's fucking crazy, and I it's it's awful. But yeah. I don't. It is crazy. I don't the state need a, of America right now, and how much he's got to clean it up. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a. Rem- All I'm saying is I don't need reminders of what's bad. I need reminders of what's fucking awesome. So I thought I just wa- I just rewatched for like the billionth time. I watched Day of the Dead, and uh, I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna write a song about Sarah, the main character, yeah. and how she was right the whole time, and everybody else in the movie was wrong." And uh, that's pretty much it. And now was, we I don't get- use that song. And now we don't use that song. <laughs> hey, but it was a jumping off. Point. Yeah, but it was like, it I, was and I definitely. thought, like, what if I just write another song about a horror movie? So then I wrote a song about fucking the Wicker Man. Uh, then Jake wrote a song about a, a fucking serial killer yeah. and then uh well, no uh, actually jake miller wrote the music for that and oh yeah, yeah yeah jake miller he had one just sitting in the like enough like he'd already written it before the band even started and, and then jake added lyrics and words over it yeah and and then now we've got it songs just, dude, about we we stuff. started practicing and it was like two months in we had a full set it wasn't even like i mean it, it wasn't even two months we Two months, we had a full set complete ready to play, but like it was probably three weeks we had all the songs we wanted. Yeah, right? all the ideas were there. Yeah. But I mean, again, because I've, you know, we've done, we've interviewed a, a bunch of bands as, as being part of Never Nervous. I know how boring fucking like, and then guess what we did? Yeah. And You'll then, never believe it. And then Austin, then Austin came in, and as soon as, <laughs> as soon as, as soon as uh, his Vic Firth drumstick hit the snare, I knew that this was going to be something. I do got, I do got a, uh, his, oh, Vic Firth, huh? Vic Firth. Um, now, nah, I do got a funny story about the beginning of the band uh when we first started we were not taking it serious at all and we were going to call ourselves mechanicong which was <laughs> which was like a, a mechanical king kong character yeah um but uh then we got a couple songs and we were like oh this is more serious than we had planned on so we need a better name so prayer line's a pretty sick name for real thank you i mean that's just like a uh I don't know. I was just thinking I, about that earlier. I was like, dude, prayer line, pretty sick. I like. I like. You lucked out on that. There's one. a lot of layers to it because, like, uh, you th- you can think of it like um, we could be at the other end of the prayer line, and that's not any help. Or you better call the prayer you line. Better call right. the prayer line. Out. That's yeah. that's the idea. Like, It'll turn your brain into shit. Yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I grew up in a Southern Baptist house, so like, the, I got recommended plenty of prayer lines. Yeah. Like, you know, so because it seems pretty lenient. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up Southern Baptist. I was out running the streets every day. <laughs> right. I remember one time because like they'd always recommend you like Christian music to listen to growing up, and they were like, "Oh, here's a if you, you like Tupac, oh, I got something for you." And I don't remember the artist's name, but they and the song that they gave me was "Jesus Is My Homeboy." Mm. Dude, do you uh, talk? You like Tupac? <laughs> Check out this hot new rapper. His name is For God. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's who he raps for. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I, we're not necessarily, like, anti-religious either. Like, if you have to be religious to... Well, Jake, maybe. I don't know. I, I am. Okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> if that's what you need, whatever, that's fine. But yeah, like, whatever helps you sleep at night. I don't give a shit what yeah. you do. But horror movies, they're always going to be great. And there's there's a billion great horror movies. And they're all, it's always going to be there to write about. It's way... I'd much rather hear just me as a consumer of fucking, you know, uh, all kinds of music. I'd rather hear songs about, I don't know, fucking uh, cinema or something than to hear some other white dickhead dude talk about his feelings. <laughs> it's, yeah. al- it's also about balance, too. Like, there's enough shit in the world. You have to have some kind of fun. Right. right? 
Yeah. That's like, kind I, of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not comparing us to the Misfits, even though we kind of like bite them a little bit sometimes, but like, I mean, how fun are the Misfits? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. We just want to have fun. And the thing is, is if you want a dose of real life, uh, all you have to you look no further than your social media. You'll yeah. get an overdose, exactly, of real life. So why don't you just like escape into something? Uh, fun we're trying to add balance like to your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. but also we're super scary. So we're, we're like we're like the Ghostbusters. Like we're here to we're like kooky. <laughs> yeah. Who are you going to call? Uh, Prayer no. line. Ah, great. Yeah. Yeah. We're like the Ghostbusters in that way, that we're going to be getting blowjobs all the time. <laughs> yes. With this yes. music. Yes. We're going to and have a seance. Wait, when does that start? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be calling out the dead here uh, in a seance in order to get more blowjobs. So. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this. If you were to ask us, even though I don't even know if you've heard, we've got a single coming out uh, this weekend, but um, have you, I don't know if you've heard it yet, but if you were to ask us to write a song about a horror movie. Oh, yeah, which one? I, I mean, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the Frailty, is that what it would be? If Yeah, of course. But if you had to ask about another horror movie that wasn't Frailty? Yeah, well, something that doesn't have Bill Paxton in it. Oh, okay. Hmm. You know, like, horror movies are not my genre of choice because sometimes I feel like there's so many that are just like, hey, we're just making a movie. That's like every genre, though. Yeah, there's so much of, like, so much of the same. So my big things are, like, psychological thrillers. So... Would it be a horror movie that you would write a song about? I don't know. But maybe you could write a song about uh, Ex Machina. That was pretty frightening. That movie is... So, I actually just rewatched that a month ago. Yeah. And that, it is so fucking good. Call it sci-fi. I don't know. It's pretty frightening. I don't know. It's like psychological sci-fi. We're not against writing about sci-fi We're not against stuff. rap. We're not against rappers. <laughs> but we are against those thugs. <laughs> rap. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Big shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm down yeah. for that. Yeah, I'm it. down to uh, I'm down to write about some sci-fi well, that's the thriller. Thing. Like when Jake had the lyrics for the uh, song. What, what is it? Dennis Nilsson, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the song that we were talking about before that Jake Dennis Miller is like a Scottish serial killer. Yeah, that lived in like London, and he would like he was. They call him the uh, the. They call him the they English. He lived in Scotland, definitely. <laughs> they call him the, they no. call him the Scottish psychopath. Yeah, no, he's in Scotland. Yeah, he's Scottish. That he lived in London. Most of his murders Jake? were in London. Oh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I really, literally just re-listened to the last podcast episode. On okay, that. all right. So anyway, yeah, he's just, he. They call him the English or the this Scottish Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. So how about that? Anyways, what was this? Where was that story going? I'm uh, just saying that we, we everything up to everything's end, not a horror it, it's movie, not yeah. just we're not just like hey man here's another song about a scary movie even though yeah. it's predominantly what we do this song's about Day of the Dead this song's about Dawn of the Dead this song's about <laughs> Dawn of the you know Dead. I was thinking about writing a song about the sound of music <laughs> hey dude I'm not that's not true but <laughs> there are some scary parts in that movie though yeah especially we, the whole World War II part <laughs> yeah like when the Nazi whenever Nazis like enter the screen it's like oh shit I wasn't there but my grandparents said it was frightening yeah <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so it is what it is. But guys, uh, I tell you what. Before we get any further, let's give everyone because uh, we're talking about the band and sneak we'll, peek. Let's give everybody a sneak peek. Let's give everybody the worldwide exclusive because you guys haven't even released this shit no. yet. It's going to be exclusive to the Sean versus Wild podcast. Uh, we you got a song here called "A Martyr's Death." Yeah, Phil, yes. you, this is a song that Phil half, half wrote and What's uh, half it about, stole. Phil? Well, yeah, okay. Actually, I'm glad. I'm really glad you said that because yeah. I've completely forgot that uh, the majority of these lyrics I didn't write. I stole them straight uh, from the Wicker Man because there's a passage, and I don't know if you're if you're if you're well, listening. You stole them from. Uh, it's a Walt Whitman poem. Walt Whitman. So basically, there's, there's a mo- part in the movie where Christopher Lee is reciting. I thought for the longest time I thought it was just Christopher Lee being Christopher Lee and yeah. like and just being awesome, but it turns out he's reciting a Walt Whitman poem. I don't know the name from of the poem. Leaves of Grass. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Um, it. Uh, anyway, because he recites it, so it's a very like you know it's a very important part of the movie. Um, but yeah, so the verses are a Walt Whitman poem. The chorus is me writing dumb words. It's fantastic, <laughs> and it's not the it's, Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. Yeah, no, the no, it's, it's fucking man. Christopher yeah. Lee. Yeah, you'll hear, you'll know it's definitely the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man by the lyrics, "The bees, <laughs> <laughs> they're in my eyes." <laughs> this song is the bees' knees. <laughs> It's not. It's not about the Nicolas Cage version, but you're certainly gonna. You're certainly gonna think it is because it's the bee's knees. <laughs> that's the alter, That's definitely the alternate title. What are, yes. what are you, Wolfman or whatever? <laughs> yeah, Wolfman Jack. Hey, this is a spooky Halloween themed <laughs> podcast. <laughs> 
But guys, let's uh, let's go ahead and get to it. This is a martyr's death by prayer line. Everybody, that is a martyr's death by prayer line. Not to be confused with a martyr's dream. <laughs> yes. Dude, what a what a totally different song it would be if it were indeed a martyr's dream. <laughs> hey, what watched... did you dream about, dude? Oh man, it was fucking crazy. Can't dude, my wait third to die. Grade, my third grade teacher was there, dude. I no, was it's actually go kart. I'm pretty it sure it's the title. It's the title of that Brett Kavanaugh uh, movie, a Martyr's Dream. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Topical humor here, guys. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, back. welcome back to the Phil Donahue show. Yeah. <laughs> welcome back to Phil the Thrill and the rest of the prayer lines. <laughs> Dude, uh, you mentioned Christopher Lee before the break, and yes. I've always had this uh, thing where I thought Christopher Lee might have been the single coolest person that has ever lived. Yes, ever. Oh, man. Yes, yeah. and. Uh, so I, I was reading up a lot about him, and it was like, oh, yeah, dude, Christopher Lee's like uh, a spy during World War II. Yes. He's killed a lot of people. Yeah, killed a lot of people. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a spy, special agent. Mm-hmm. His, he's cousins with Ian Fleming, the guy that wrote James Bond. Didn't know that. Not only is he cousins with Ian Fleming, Ian Fleming based James Bond off of him. What? And a couple other people, like James Bond. Also, he was like part of the mold. He's an amalgam, yeah, of okay. like Christopher Lee and a couple other people. Okay. And he was also Ian Fleming's first choice to play James Bond. Wow. Did not know that. That's In awesome. the original movies, which he ended up playing Scaramanga in Man with a Golden Gun. Uh, so he played a villain that had three nipples. Weird. Right. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, is this dude, okay, yeah, spy during World War II, influenced the James Bond character. Right. Um was Dracula for right. decades. The be- in my opinion, the best. He is the quintessential Dracula. Am I wrong? I'm just saying, dude. 
Who's the tell, tell me I'm wrong. I'm not going to tell you. I'll you're tell wrong. you you're wrong. Okay, who's better? Bella oh, I didn't know I had to do that. Oh. <laughs> Bella Lugosi? <laughs> I don't know. Bella Lugosi is probably the quintessential, but I mean, yeah, he's I definitely agree. the coolest Dracula. Uh, he, dude, I'm sorry. Have you tried? Um, I don't want to like. Blah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. Christopher Lee just brought like a whole new like badass. It's like, don't fuck with Dracula. You know who I thing. like? Bram Stoker. <laughs> yeah, what a great. <laughs> what? Dude, have you seen his Dracula, dude? He directed the shit out of that movie. <laughs> What a Bram Stoker, yeah. Just like, hey, dude, he directed the shit out dude, of that. Dude, we should have fucking named the band Bram Stoker. <laughs> that would have been no, awesome. No, no, we should have named it Bram Stroker. <laughs> that was Aaron's idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but hey, speaking of Christopher Lee, something that my wife just turned me on to, I didn't know this, uh, but Christopher Lee is an accomplished musician as well. or not? Mu- I don't know if he pl- what he played, but he's a, an accomplished singer. Yeah, and he's got that metal band where he does like spoken word. Mm-hmm. Uh what? Yeah. No. Yeah. He's a real? metal band. Yeah. Where he does nothing but like insane. He just like does spoken word. Like spoken super... word about the, the, the Saxons killing whoever the Saxons killed. And I it's don't know. metal? It's, yeah. And it's absolutely crazy. That sounds awesome. I think it's, it's called. Okay. Metal. It's about like. Char- I think it's called Charlemagne. Yeah. 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 Oh, wait. I know what you're talking about yeah. now. And not only that, think about it. Uh, the guy probably had the biggest uh, movies of his career. Between his him being like eighty to ninety years old, it, as far as box office goes, yeah, yeah, definitely. no shit. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. You do like three or four Lord of the Rings here. You're gonna do a couple Star Wars there, right? Right. You're gonna do, uh, you know, his Tim Burton's uh, remake of Charlie well, Ch- Willy the, Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, there, there, there's a there's an album on Spotify because everyone's on Spotify now. I've heard and, of that. Yeah, yeah, you've heard I'm of on it. it. Well, there's an album. I can't remember cool the title brag. of it, but he did an entire album. Uh, and this is he recorded it before the Lord of the Rings movies because apparently he's like been obsessed with the, all the Tolkien universe for his whole life since he was a kid. But um, there's an album that is dedicated just to the stories from the Lord of the Rings, and it's like more like I don't want to say classical music. I don't know how to classify whatever it is that 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 is like fantasy music. I don't know what the fuck it is, but yeah. it's so fun. It's so much fun, man. Uh, it's it's just Christopher Lee singer, you know. It's like yeah. it's just fucking awesome. Would, would you call it Baroque pop, possibly? Sure. Hey, okay. and if it ain't Baroque, <laughs> don't fix it. That's what I always say. <laughs> Quote by Mozart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you ever hear uh, when Leonard Nimoy did a song about Bilbo Baggins? Fuck yes. Yeah. No. In the middle of the earth, in the land of the Shire, there's a brave little hobbit whom we all admire. You haven't heard that? <laughs> That's exactly I didn't what know, it sounds I didn't know like Leonard 100%. Nimoy was trying to stand up Weird Al. Bilbo, <laughs> Bilbo Baggins. No. The famous little hobbit of them all. <laughs> With his little <laughs> woolly toes. I have no idea what you're talking about. Listeners of the podcast, uh, go ahead and uh, pause it right now and check out uh, the Bustin. What? <laughs> check out Bustin? <laughs> Just Google bust. Yeah, don't check out the song Jake was just talking about. <laughs> let's talk about. Let's watch anything else. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> definitely check out Bustin' and then check out the uh, yes. I, what's it called? The Ballad, ballad of, Bil- of Bilbo Baggins. It's yeah. not even a ballad. It's pretty upbeat. It's really. on Spotify. Yeah. Believe it or not. Is it anything like the Ballad of Peter Pumpkinhead? Um, I've never. I'm not familiar with that. It's a song I didn't know. I have always thought it was a Crash Test Dummy song, but it uh, turns out... Uh, who's the man that did it first? XTC. XTC. Turns out Crash Test Dummies did it better. Nah. The end. Oh, hot hot <laughs> takes. Hard disagree. Hot takes right here. Dude. In, mm-hmm. in the Smithsonian. Once there was this kid whose name was Peter Pumpkinhead. <laughs> <laughs> Did they make fun of him in school or something? Dude. <laughs> His hair had turned from black into bright white. Yeah, you yeah. know the yeah, these yeah, are yeah, real yeah. lyrics to yeah. the Crash Test Dummies' biggest single, yeah. minus the Peter Pumpkin head. Now you have to I pay thought it was Peter yeah. Pumpkin Eater. <laughs> <laughs> what is fact. that? That's like a that's definitely a Garth Brooks song. Oh, okay. Is it really? I thought it was an insult. Like, <laughs> hey, Jake, stop being such a Peter Pumpkin Eater. <laughs> He's a little bit of a Peter uh, Pumpkin Eater, if you know what I mean. Yeah, if you, get, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Just move your hand from side to side. He's a bit of a yeah. Peter Pumpkin Eater, mm. if you're picking up what I'm laying down. I don't, actually. <laughs> the man is obsessed with pumpkin, is what I'm saying. 
pumpkin spice. They're high in fiber. Pumpkin, pumpkin in latte. Case you didn't know the seeds, pumpkin seeds, high in fiber. Dude, I heard you can uh, <laughs> eat a bunch of pumpkin seeds and get all fucked up, dude. <laughs> dude, speaking of pumpkins, if if Vader Bomb actually <laughs> if they do actually do anything relevant in the next month. I will eat an entire pumpkin, f- <laughs> fucking raw. I will, eat, I will eat it. I will eat the stem. I eat the whole thing. If they do anything worth the shit that anybody cares about, if Vader Bomb can just do anything worth the shit, I will eat one whole pumpkin Dude, on stage know. at the show. Oh my god! That I will eat an enti- If they if they can do anything before, I'm just saying if they can get anybody interested, I will eat an entire fucking pumpkin. And well, you really do not want to uh, feed Phil, fill the gill. <laughs> Full of fiber. Fiber pumpkin. <laughs> That's true. You want to stay away from that. Anyway, Somebody's com- going to have to come to his cubicle and be like, uh, what's the deal here? <laughs> yeah, anyway, come see Prayer Line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, uh, for you know, if you're not going to come for the awesome music, at least come out to Kaiju October 27th to see if Phil's going to eat a full pumpkin or not. Yeah. Yes. You know uh, we, what I'm saying? We have another show uh, this Friday at Odeon. Ah, another what's show. The actual, what's the date? Friday, at October 12th. At which show would be eating the pumpkin? Or that would be the, the, pumpkin. the 27th. October 27th, oh, the show the Vader that Bomb, Vader Bomb backed out on us. If you're listening, if you're fucking listening, <laughs> Vader Bomb, <laughs> you have until the 27th to do something relevant so that way we can get Phil the gill <laughs> stuffed with a pumpkin. Yeah. yeah. Stem, everything. I would Pussy, def- butt, every motherfucking <laughs> thing, dude. <laughs> Yes, but yeah, uh, it's uh, the show. Also, if we hadn't mentioned it already, Girlwood, uh, Blind Scryer, yeah, uh, and really, 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 they're fucking both awesome bands. Yes, Blind Scryer is like doom metal. I guess you. Would it's say. like Sabbathy. Yeah, fuck, it's fucking fun. All their songs are about doom. Yes, yes. The, like yes, Doom sixty four. Girl, Girlwood <laughs> yeah. is a uh, Girlwood is fucking great. Always live. So Everybody yes. knows Girlwood. Yeah, it's gonna be a good show. Hey, yes. they were just on the podcast yeah. uh, last that week. That was like yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go back into the archives. The archives. Check out the Girlwood podcast. Or just ask me about it. I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, just ask Phil, dude. <laughs> you know what? Phil, don't worry about it. Phil will mansplain it to you. If they- <laughs> <laughs> also, if there's one thing Phil is good at, it's explaining things without getting off topic. <laughs> That's for sure. But you know, let's go ahead and talk about it because uh, not only. Uh, do you have a show coming up? Oh, actually, before we go to the show, let's talk about A Martyr's Death. you got a music video yes. for it that's coming out, yep. and I'm stoked about that as well. Well, uh, Mike Thompson, who's become one of the city's like baddest fucking directors. He's seriously brilliant. Uh, he he directed it. He, he came up with the whole idea. I mean, it's the idea is it's loosely based on the song, and the, you know, and the song is loosely based, or actually it's very based on The Wicker Man, but the whole idea behind the video is loosely based on the movie The Wicker Man. We kind of took the idea from The Wicker Man. The procession. Just, the procession and the whole burning at, uh, the whole Wicker Man burn. Hey, don't want to ruin a movie from the 70s for you, but... Uh, uh, it's 40 years. Go ahead and spoil it. Uh, <laughs> I think the, they'll be fine. The whole human sacrifice angle. Uh, it's a fun... Fun uh, little video, and the, and the greatest part of the whole video is you don't see any of our faces because we all have masks on. Perfect. Because so, we are fucking ugly. Yeah, and that's probably the scariest part about this band, to yeah. be honest. And that's yeah. one of the reasons this isn't a uh, video podcast. <laughs> well, actually, I thought my face was the scariest part, but the, I walked by a mirror this morning and saw my ass. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Holy lord! Wait till you eat that pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the pumpkin seeds are going to look the exact same coming out <laughs> as they do going in. Mm. Oh, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great video. We actually had a lot of help from our friends, so huge shout out to all of our friends that yeah. made it. Family and friends, actually. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, we got lucky. Uh, a bunch of family helped out. Uh, it, was in, it was in a great location. Great day. It was hot as fuck, but the, the, as far as like the look of the day, like lots of natural light. Yeah. Uh, it's a fucking brilliant video. Mike Thompson, again, crushes it like he does everything. So, so we yeah. did it in my backyard, which is like this big field, like horse farm field. And uh, I built a, I built like an altar, in like a, on the, in a couple of days. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, Your neighbors all, are gonna be like, "What the hell is going yeah, on?" Yeah, no, the neighbors had to be like really wondering. There was one part where we're just running with our drone chasing behind us. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, "Fuck this!" Vanguard one. <laughs> yeah, it was Vanguard one exactly. But um, yeah, it was a really fun. It was a long day. It was a very long day, but worth it. Yeah, actually, it was, totally it was the it. one of the 
worst days of my life. Yeah, Austin, <laughs> Austin what do you have? Pink eye? Or yeah. review? <laughs> Dude, and he, I ended it. up with like bug bites up my legs for like three weeks. I had to get uh, steroid cream. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. Oh, but it was a fun, fun time. Dude, no, there was, was fucking pizza, beer. Uh, lots. I met lots of new people I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Really fun people. Yeah, we um, should also mention Julie Strebel. Uh, oh, the actress that like, started you know, in our video that had to like fucking deal with us for like nine hours. Yeah, she's but amazing. She, yeah. she was super, super cool. Um, but yeah, Mike Thompson's whole crew. Everyone Tommy there, John uh, as the director of photography is incredible. Yeah, so, yeah. Did all those guys. Like, I, it was just fu- it was such a fun experience. I would cherish that experience forever. Even if nobody likes the song and nobody watches the video, I will remember it and I will cherish it for until I'm fucking dead, man. Dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, I appreciate you guys so much for inviting me uh, to be a part of the video shoot. Dude, and, like, I know you were invited. And stuff, I so know you were invited. I, I really appreciate that, dude. It sounds like a lot of fun. And, I appreciate uh, you for totally dipping out and not showing up. You yeah. know what? You're going to feel like a real piece of shit when you see at the very end, dedicated to Sean yeah. Thriller Smith. <laughs> This is crazy. He couldn't be here today. He said he was too busy. I come to all the Never Nervous parties, but yeah, somehow my invitation must have got lost. Dude, I know mail. you were invited. On Facebook, at least. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's the most formal way to do yes. things. Like, the podcast is going to get real awkward at this point. Right? <laughs> yes. It's going to get real silent. Dude, you were invited, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dudes, uh, I can't wait to uh, check out the video. And, uh, listeners, that's going to be available next week. So we'll make sure to keep you posted. Maybe I'll put that in the recommendations. I guess that'll be, like, the 20th, maybe? Is that the... I don't know the hard release date. I know the song comes out this Friday. The 12th. Uh, and, and, and the song will be out on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple, whatever, wherever you shop, it's right. going to be there. Bandcamp, whatever the fuck you want to do. But um, the video itself, it was supposed to come out the same day. I'm not sure if it still is. There's, it's, I don't know where the video is. is done-ish. Gotcha. Uh, but whatever. I have to it's say, I'm ready. starting yep. to suspect on our video some foul play from Vader Bomb. I think they may be holding us up on this well if, if there's anything i know about vader bomb is that they are fucking hackers man dude that's i've literally i think that they had a cameo in the matrix <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure they were consultants or what about that movie hackers <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were consultants on the movie the matrix uh <laughs> The Wachowski brothers. You know, uh, you know what the best part of the, the, of the it's that, called Vader Bomb, dude. We got to figure out if this it, is true to life. You know, I, I never got into like the whole orbital scene, but that song from that like, was also on Mortal Kombat uh, or uh, what Halcyon, is, whatever. Oh, know. Halcyon, on and on. Yeah, man. I know that song because it was on CKY Two K. Fuck yeah! That's the only reason yeah, why I know that awesome. song, dude. How about that song? Let's talk about it, dude. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what the orbital scene is. You like literally confused the shit out of me. I was like, does he mean like like electronic music or techno? What no, it's this whole new orbital? it's this whole new genre of pornography that I'm super into. Dude, I'm super into it. I highly suggest orbital. It. Orbital. Put it Dude, in recommendation. You might be down for sixty. You might be down for anal, but are you down for orbital? Dude. <laughs> oh, God. It's like uh uh it's like uh, how they have sex in demolition man when they put their headsets on. <laughs> And it's just in virtual reality. It's orbital. Yeah, it's orbital, dude. Dude. Oh, You'll man. feel it in your frontal lobe. <laughs> it's just total orbital. We should say um, that show at Kaiju on the 27th, we do have some like super special stuff planned, too. So it's going to be really, really fun. Yeah, like a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, pumpkin. I mean, outside of that. Will it be consumed? Oh. Will it not be? We're doing some like really fun covers and like some things like that. So it's going to be a good show. Yeah, and I'm imagining, I'm sure everybody, the other two bands... Are, playing are going to have some really cool shit going down too so yeah. uh and maybe plus, some decorations maybe uh the famous never nervous skeleton will be there no actually i've got like four famous <laughs> never nervous skeletons but basically i just want to remind everybody this is a costume party as well <clears throat> dress up if you dress up it's only five bucks the the uh door price is ten dollars but if you dress up like an asshole you are it's only five dollars and don't be fucking that guy it's like you know like that that thirteen year old uh, girl that's boy. No, no, don't be <laughs> don't be that thirteen year old girl that comes to my house every year and it's like, uh, trick or treat, and I'm like, where's your costume? And she's like, uh, and I'm like, you're not getting any fucking candy. You're an asshole. Go home. I don't okay. know who's the asshole in that situation. <laughs> yeah. But I have a story about trick or treating at Phil's house. One day, maybe we were, that's the only meal she's going to get all year is just a candy bar. We, dude. I doubt she's it. Doing man. it she, out of desperation. Well, she was, can't afford a costume. I was hanging out at Phil's house on now Halloween. Now made you feel bad. Handing out candy, right? And he's dressed as Owen Hart. And uh, 
this this kid comes up and he's just wearing like a flannel shirt and jeans or whatever and um and and feels like what are you supposed to be and he goes i'm a fuck boy (laughs) (laughs) and then which i was like this is the best costume ever and then uh nailed it yeah and then um later on this this kid came up and he was like uh asking phil what are you supposed to be and uh he goes are you natty (laughs) oh yeah You told me that story at the yes. last party that someone Dude, mistook I was, you for Natty Nightheart. I was Owen Hart. But I had you a blonde like Natty Nightheart. I was the Anvil Nightheart. I was wearing daughter. a blonde heart. I was wearing a blonde wig, and I had my tights on and all that with my hearts and my belt. Yeah, so, but he looked like Natty. No, I didn't. Which look, belt? Well, uh, it was a tag team belt because oh, Jen okay. and I, Jen, it was my the wife championship. <laughs> 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 no, my wife was Bret Hart, and she looked great, but we were the, the Hart Foundation from uh, WrestleMania 10, but we didn't fight each other. Yeah, that's probably a good thing, because Bret and Owen weren't actually tag team champions, but I'm sure you probably already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> Owen Hart did hold the tag team title with both uh, Davy Boy Smith and Yoko Zuna, I'll have mm-hmm. you know. He also teamed up with Coco can Beware. Can we just say, wait, can we just say mm. rest in peace to all three of those people you just yeah, mentioned? They're absolutely. all fucking dead. How about R.I.P., that? dude? Yeah. This goes out to the Heart Foundation. Hey, moment of silence. And okay. And okay. Right. <sighs> Got it. And that is what the martyr's dream is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Uh, guys, uh, definitely go out to Kaiju. It is a costume party, as Phil the Thrill has just told you. So uh, what are you going as? Uh, what will your costumes be? Or is this, is this a secret? Actually, you know what? It What's is a your secret. best Halloween costume? It was you probably say? that year. Like Jen and I made the Owen and Bret Hart costumes completely from scratch. And what I mean, when I say we, I mean she. Right. Uh, she did all the work, uh, you know, made felt hard. You probably made start- the dinner. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're too tuckered out. <laughs> No, but seriously, like she did such a good job, and uh, that's my favorite thing that I've ever done. My Halloween costume. What's your best one, Austin? I, I, was, I was sitting here Ended trying. To, Mike. I was sitting here trying to think. Uh, I'm not even sure to be honest. I went with uh, three of my friends as uh, the Anchorman dudes. Yeah, that was oh, pretty funny. That could be that's fun. Good. That I was Brian fun. Fantana with a mean mustache. <laughs> oh, I do remember that. You had an actual were. mustache. Yeah, I was Dog the Bounty Hunter last year. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I went around asking everybody if they wanted a cigarette. That's what <laughs> you can stay off the ice, bro. <laughs> Jake, what about you? Get right with Christ. That's what's up. Uh, I don't. I, I haven't done Halloween in a long time because I'm very old. But probably a Dracula or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Christopher Lee, dude. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. Just keeps now, let coming me ask back. You, who's the Rats. best Dracula? Christopher Lee, Bela Lugosi, Bram Stoker, or Jake? <laughs> you know. Oh man, going Bram Stoker. Dude, Bram Stoker directed the shit out of that Dracula movie, dude. If it weren't for Bram Stoker, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the horror fan that I am today. Uh, my best Halloween costume was, and I think Phil will probably attest to this. I did Gambit. One oh year. my god, oh, was it was it was so it was all from scratch as well. Yeah, so fucking perfect. It was fun. Like who who has ever dressed up as Gambit <laughs> from the X Men? <laughs> and and Jake crushed it. Mon ami. Mon ami. Ah, I have Sherry. not seen this. Uh, we'll have to post some photos. Yeah, I have of to this. find a picture Dude, of it. It's fucking crazy. Did you carve it. your own bow staff? Well, I just took a broomstick that was like broken half. <laughs> so it's it way too short for Gambit, but I still had it and I just painted it silver. And did I had, you, also had some cards that I threw at people. Did you get like the big silvery. Uh, that big thing in the 90s where it's like everything had to always have like pouches and like ridges, like those boots that Gambit so, wore that like went all the way up. I took rain boots. Knee. I took rain boots and painted them blue. And then I had black sweatpants and I did the blue lines up the side of the sweatpants. It looked mm. just like it should. No, it, it was a perfectly done thing. And, I, yeah. and that night, I, I was living in an apartment that, at that point in Crescent Hill and off of Frankfurt Avenue. And I had a party, and there was probably, it wasn't a huge party, it was like 25 people. And once the party started to wane down around 1 a.m., we were like, dude, this is when that bar, um, uh, it's an, it was an ice cream place for a while after that. Uh, it, Long Shot Tavern, right? Long yeah. Shot, yeah. Long yeah. Shot Tavern. There was a, a cover band called the Merry Pranksters that have been around forever. Yeah. A bunch of old dudes that play like whatever. They uh, play Grateful uh, Dead Grateful shit. Dead, yeah. Um, so anyway, we knew that they were playing because they do it every it, on that particular day of the week. They play every night that day. I think it was like a Sunday or something. So we we're like, dude, let's just walk up to the Longshot Tavern. We were all fucking blitzed out of our mind. Let's go to the Longshot Tavern and just fucking finish the night there. 
It was probably like six of us. So we go up there. Do you remember this, Jake? No. Okay. Uh, so we <laughs> go you up were there. Blitz out of your mind. <laughs> Maybe, just as the story said. I don't remember if you left at this point or not. But we went up to the <laughs> we went up to Longshot Tavern. The Merry Pranksters are playing whatever song you know the fucking stuff. And Casey riding Jones. That train. Sure. High on cocaine. Hey, there, let there me put is. you in the mood here. Listen. Yes. Riding that train. <laughs> Listeners of the Sean vs. Wild podcast, name one other song other than Casey Jones by the Grateful Dead. I fucking they had that one in the 80s. dare you. <laughs> they had the one, what was that song about bones or whatever? Touch of Grey. Touch of Grey. They had a, yeah. It was like a Halloween video. Hey, uh, how perfect about that? for Halloween playlist, guys. Yeah. Here's the deal. Grateful Dead, everybody loves the band. Nobody knows a goddamn song. I either. do not love the band, but anyway. No one does. Uh, <laughs> I don't know anybody that really does. I know some people that got a couple like, oh, dude, I'm gonna get some, you know, bears tattooed. Dude, how about that? <laughs> that that skull is so nuts. I love their dude. teddy bears, dude. Anyway, I got it all the way around my arm like a tribal band, dude. <laughs> you know, I like music. So what happened? But I don't have it connect on the inside. It was what, too painful. What happened? Okay, so we go there and everything's going just fine. And I don't know if you if if you're old if you people listening are old enough to remember the Long Shot Tavern, but it's a place that you go to. Whoa, what do you uh, mean, you people? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I gotcha. Go ahead. The median age in this room is like thirty five, right? Uh, no, I'm thirty two. Yeah, I'm, I'm thirty two. I'm thirty five. I'm twenty three. Jake's Jake. eighteen. <laughs> Yeah, not undisclosed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Median's about 35. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. All, all, all that matters is I'm 35. Right, So, yeah. basically... That's we, we, all that matters. That's all that matters. And, and I'm, nothing else matters. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, James, with yeah. a Z. Uh, so, basically, we're, we're at the, the place. The pranksters are playing their whatever, and playing the songs and i was really drunk i was there with my wife my girlfriend at the time and for some reason your I wife and your girlfriend dude both cool brag dude uh, yeah look at this guy i've had a really cr- cool life i've been man. blessed too blessed to be stressed <laughs> so like the the, prank, the pranksters are playing and i'm for some reason i'm like i said i'm really drunk and i keep getting closer to the band keep getting closer to the oh, band oh i'm starting to this is coming back to me now okay so i'm getting closer to the band and to the point where like uh, if I get any close, I'm gonna be like nose to nose with the the old dude with the you long beard. You are gonna beard. be in the fucking band, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna be, yeah. So, what I, were you dressed like at this? Time? At this particular party, I had a cloak. Uh, my face was painted white, and I had blood. Like my eyes were all black, and I had blood coming out of my mouth. Nice. And uh, it was actually the cloak I wore in the music video <laughs> uh, that we were, t- we were talking about earlier. So anyway, so I keep getting closer to the band, and I'm like up face to face with them. I don't know why. But then the the bouncer comes out and he's like, "Hey, you gotta." He puts his hand on my shoulder and he's like, "You gotta take a few steps back." And I'm like, "Oh, my bad. I didn't realize I was doing that. I'm sorry." So the bouncer leaves, and then I slowly start getting closer and closer to the band again. And I'm like, again, I'm like face to face. Usually with that's it. awkward for people in the band and the audience. I mean, but like you were just totally no. Him. I was out of my mind, yeah. man. So I I was like nose to nose with this dude, this old guy with the beard again, with a long gray beard. And then the bouncer comes up to me again. He's like, "Hey, man." You gotta fucking get back, dude. And I'm like, oh, whoops. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize I was doing it again. So I get back, and of course, because I'm fucking drunk, I do it again. I start creeping. I take slowly, stepping closer and closer, and I get up in the band's face again. And that's when the guy took me and just kicked me out. And then, uh, <laughs> so that uh, the, I felt. So I had to like do the walk of shame all the way home, which was like a mile down, or no, it was like probably like three quarter mile. And I I woke up and I fell, apparently fell many times on the way home because I was just like my my costume was covered in mud and Dude, shame, the first mud and blood and shame. The first yes. person to ever want to be too close to the Mary Pranksters. Yeah, my thing is is what I love most about that whole story is like the. There's a bouncer that's like off stage, like, dude, you're you're too close. You're you're too close to this 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 band. Like normally, that I've never ever heard that happen. Yeah, I mean, in my life, like, yeah. dude, you're too close to the band. Usually, like, the bands are like, everybody, please, please, please come. Yeah, pay attention to us, dude. dude. Not the merry pranksters, dude. They're like, look, please be five to nineteen feet away, <laughs> dude. For for all I know, it might not have even been a, a bouncer. Like it was just some guy that was like, I don't know, but it was just some big guy he was that wearing was like a security shirt from Spencer's Gifts. So, very hard to then, tell. Then he turned his hat around. He was wearing. He had a backwards hat. He turned his hat around, and it was a Wayne's World hat that he also got from Spencer's. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, but it. yeah, it was very embarrassing. I uh, I've done many, just like many other people. I, I think everyone in this room. You've done many other people. 
just like everyone in this room. <laughs> everyone except for Austin because he's too young. But like everyone in this room has had a bad experience, or uh, something you did something really bad or dumb at uh, Longshot Tavern when it was still there. Yeah, I was pretty dumb at Longshots. I, I feel like you guys. about like Tap Room. Anytime I ever am at Tap Room, it's because. I've been like I'm part of like a, a party of people, and I'm obviously not the one responsible for anything uh, yeah. transportation wise because right. I'm already bombed. Right, I'm so bombed. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get that way off ginger ale. I was sniffing. Kind of like your podcast in yeah, the Leo Reader's yeah, Choice exactly. Awards. <laughs> yeah, I've bombed harder than my podcast in the Leo Weekly. <laughs> Leo, if you're listening, which I'm sure you're not. <laughs> Actually, they do Fuck listen. They, they listen just to not vote. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> they're like, you know what? We're not going to write up this guy. I literally, have, I've sent them emails too. Like, look, I'm number two in the entire country. Do you want to talk about it? And they're like, I'm just going to leave this on red. Fuck that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. Anytime I'm in tap room, it's like uh, I'm riding with a group of people, and it'll be like, hey. Uh, you want to go to this bar? And I'll be like, okay, cool. And we'll go to a bar that's not tap room, and then it'll be about three, four in the morning, and yes. that bar closes. And they're yes. like, hey, you want to go to tap room? And I'm like, exactly. Yeah. No. And they're like, yeah. well, we're going anyway. Yeah. And then you go. And then you go, and it's like <laughs> when you are at your most shittiest, yeah. yes. I should not be in public Yes, And then they all. close, and then yes. you stand on the sidewalk until 5.30 or something. Yes. <laughs> See, I've done that yeah. several times. I've yes. done that as an adult, as a fucking 35. Again, I'm 35, everybody. <laughs> the last time I went to Tavern, I fell between... We parked like right across the street, like literally right across the street, uh, and I fell somehow between where we parked and crossing the street. Oh, I felt like right in the middle of Bardstown Road. Oh, that's not safe. No. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, dude, why am I here? Like, right. I'm just like standing here and everybody I know is here. And I'm like, I need not be right. here in this condition. Well, it's, it's definitely one of the destinations in Louisville. Like Magbar, I feel like is one, as one of those places, at least when I lived in Old Louisville, it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Um, but the new place for me is a 35 year old guy. I live in Hikes Point now. Uh, uh, fucking the, the golden nugget, man. <laughs> the golden nugget. Sometimes into the nugget, dude. Oh, it, sometimes it's just like you know what? <laughs> it's one o'clock, and fuck it. I I don't know. This let's go to this place where there's always a drip from the ceiling. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, the bathroom, like the, the, even the bartender's like, you don't want to use the bathroom. Yeah, it's like, oh, good. There's uh, like a DJ like not giving a shit about what he's doing. Right. It's one, always. Really I went weird. there one time at three p.m. in the afternoon, and um, you know, it's like the usual, like you know the older guys that are in there like this 60 plus crowd and um they they all are very vocal about how much they hate their wives and i it was very quiet there's tvs on on like the on like the weather channel and it's 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 muted so i was like fuck i'm gonna play the jukebox so i put on a just to see what it would happen i put on a run the jewel song and and immediately like the fucking place was like oh god Damn it! Who the <laughs> fuck did this? They ran you out of the nugget. No, it was funny though. Uh, the bartender there at the time was like, I asked because I was like, "Hey man, they've got a stage. What if we booked a show here? It'd be kind of fun to have a show on Hikes Point." And the guy was like, "You don't want to do that." <laughs> He's like, he he was just like, "This place is about to collapse in on itself. You don't want to. It's it's just, it's just a, this place is so gross. It's the diviest of dives of all time. And it's what awesome. a great review! I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, go it, it, it's or? actually it's a fun place if you're in the right mindset." Set. Like my bachelor party, we at before the bachelor party started. Let's not even go here. No, no, before the party even started, we said, "Okay, one thing's for sure: we're not going to the Golden Nugget." And guess what? And guess where we ended up? And I'm pretty sure uh, Sid. It was me, Jake, Sid, Bishop, and my brother. We ended up at the Golden Nugget, of course, and we. Sid fell asleep on their front porch. Yeah, Sid fell asleep, and apparently we left him there. And Sid, he called. Like he called an Uber. Apparently, like you don't remember. Well, I don't. Them. I I, I called. We he called an Uber, then fell asleep, and for and so the Uber showed up and, and left. Picked up and then left. <laughs> and then we were walking home because I only live. I don't live that far away from there. We we're walking home, and I just rolled my ankle walking straight it in a straight line. Weird. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Uh, the Halloween season is in full force right now, so uh, make sure you celebrate your Halloween at the Golden Nugget. Yes. Yeah. I do, you'll see some horrific shit for sure. I'm, I'm this sick. place is about to fall in on itself. It's yes. about to become you Halloween might, legend. Yes. I Actually, remember the gold nugget. It collapsed. Go there. 35 patrons. If you want to do them a favor, go there and take a horrific shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's I, nothing better than that, guys. No, I don't <laughs> think <laughs> gonna top that. Nothing's gonna top that. So, listeners, uh, if you like what you've heard today, uh, definitely check out uh, Prayer Line. Where can people find you? online well as of right now we're relatively a new band we're only on facebook but mm-hmm. as of this friday that's going to change we're going to be on like our single is going to be on spotify the single called a martyr's death is going to be on spotify apple music wherever you shop for music it's going to be there for if you want to buy the track if you just want to stream it it's going to be there only digitally though not we, we only digital there's, there's no physical release as of right now but we do have plans in the it's next not available month. on eight track yet not yet not yet, not yet. okay great. yes uh, but we do have plans in the next month or month and a half to actually record uh, an album. So mm-hmm. we're very excited about that. So we will have new music coming soon. We are still doing mini discs. Is that correct? Mini yeah. discs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> laser discs. Uh, we're going to do a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a movie. Dude, I have yes. a Skid Row laser disc. <laughs> actually, it's, it's live footage. And I've music got videos. A, Apocalypse Now and laser disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone just living in the present. It's crazy. Just living in the present. 2018. Yeah. Taking a straight shot of 2018. <laughs> but yes, guys, definitely check out Prayer Line. They are on Facebook, and that link will be in the uh, show notes below. And also, too, they're going to be on Spotify. Uh, check, in, check, uh, check that out, and then also check out their video next week for A Martyr's Death. Yeah. And, uh, this Friday yeah. at Odeon. And then also this Friday at Odeon. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Give me the deets on that as we uh, ride Lo- off into the sunset. It's the Louisville Loft Show. We're playing with... Gamma and the Restless, one other person I think, and then there's like comedians and uh, visual artists and stuff. So we're, we're opening. So we'll be playing what like I think we're playing second actually. Oh, we are. What? Do yeah. you, is there any idea what time? What does that start? I think we play at ten. So 10, it's going to okay. start at like nine or something. Excellent. So, yeah. Last but question. You can find all that online. Well, Facebook. definitely go to Odeon uh, this Friday. Check out Prayer Line. A lot of great stuff, listeners, going on. And uh, last question: Where did you guys get that carpet from The Shining? For all your Jake. promotional materials. Oh, uh, Aaron, my uh, significant other, she uh, got it for me for Father's Day. Oh, happy Father's Day. Yeah, very nice. To Jake no, Jake the Snake here. But yeah, the shining carpet and all the, <laughs> the promotional manaconda. photos. The manaconda. The <laughs> manaconda. <laughs> <laughs> on all the promo- promotional photos, I was like, I know where that carpet's from. I yeah. recognize that. And also, listeners, if you like what you heard today, uh, definitely uh, subscribe to Sean vs. Wild. Uh, it's going to be jam-packed, even more wild in this next 100-plus uh, episodes, and uh, even more uh, uh, raw. I don't know. Sean vs. Wild. Forget the thriller, dude. We're getting crazy <laughs> here. And uh, if you guys are uh, in need of toilet paper or um, something to start your uh, you fire a, pit, wait, definitely check out... Wait, you Yeah, definitely check out the Leo <laughs> Weekly. Um, <laughs> This week, if you need to take a shit, a, do a Leo, horrific shit, a horrific shit, do Leo Weekly a favor. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're dropping a golden nugget, dude. You're gonna want a copy of the Leo Weekly. <laughs> but guys, this has been the Sean versus Wild podcast. Thing, D-N-N.